Come on. Right, welcome to our India live stream, but not real live stream, but more of a question and answer. I'd say it's a Q&A session. Q&A, Q&A session. So we've just spent the past two months in India and we want to give you a bit more details, sit down and chat about it. What I'm envisioning is we're sat in a hostel, you guys are asking us some questions and we're sharing our knowledge basically. But before we get into the questions, I just wanted to announce that on our channel, we have now launched memberships. So if you guys want to support the channel just a little bit more, then we've got memberships going on. So I think they start from like 99p to £2.99 to £8.99 and you get special perks when you pay monthly stickers and then we do like monthly live streams just for members. And yeah, there's quite a lot of perks per level. So if you're interested and you want to support, then check that out. But if you don't want to, just liking, commenting, watching our videos really supports us. So thank you so much. We've had loads of new subscribers since we did the India series. So. Thank you and welcome and hello. Right, you introduce, do the little a brief introduction on India in case anyone's completely new to our channel. What, you want me to go through the history of India? No, uh, just oh. talk about our well, trip. Well, that's putting me on the spot a bit, isn't it? Like, India is a country located. So we went to India in January this year. We spent two months and essentially we done a month in the north um, doing, I guess, the Golden Triangle and some of the... Uh, really popular tourist hotspots around there. And then we also done a month down south uh, where we spent a bit of time in Goa, Kerala. And then we done a bit of a random week at the end where we just started in Mumbai and kind of went across the centre of en uh, India, India, ended in India, the centre of India and finished in Chennai. So yeah, kind of north, south and then a random week. Yeah, so that's like our full trip in case anyone was interested. Anyway, shall we get straight into the questions? Yeah, where did where did the questions come from? We put them on... Oh yeah, so yeah. I did a YouTube um, community post. Loads of people asked questions there. I, and I did two Instagram stories as well. And that's where I collated the um, questions from. So. The first one says, Gaz, why are you so muscly? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. What's the first one say? Um, do the densely populated cities get overwhelming at times? Yes. <laughs> if you watched our first um, episode when we were in Delhi, our first day in Delhi, you'll see that the whole time all we did was laugh. Well, all I did was laugh because when I'm in culture shock, my way of reacting to it is And I've done this. <laughs> and so... Just had my mouth open the whole time. I genuinely think India was like way more what's this fly doing yeah i know the flies uh, attacking the camera hear it on the microphone yeah india was even more like hectic when we arrived than i even imagined it was going to be like i already had an expectation and then i'm sure it just exceeded that expectation really didn't it so yeah. it is overwhelming but you, you come prepared i think you should be prepared for that and, and i and think you get used to it yeah like really like some days everyone's annoying you or like there's loads of beeps everyone's shouting at you it's overwhelming but then other, other days you just like kind of ignore it and walk down the shop. So it very much depends on your moods quite often, doesn't it? Like yeah. if you're in a good mood, it's like, eh, it's not that bad. But if you've like had a stressful day or you're tired or you're hot or you're hungry and then you're walking down the street, you're like, God damn it, this is awful. Yeah. And you don't come to India to relax, do you? So that's, you're not coming for that part of the culture. So Well, not in the north anyway. No, definitely not. Okay. Did you feel safe? Do you think it would be good for solo traveling or a group of girls? Now, it's quite hard to answer this question because I always had gas with me, but I'd say like 90% of the time we felt safe. I think it's like any foreign country, like it, there's dodgy situations you can be put into. And there was a few, there's a few rocky situations, but it was like, we've had that in other countries as well. I think as a solo female traveler, it's hard for me to answer, but I did meet other solo females but a lot of the lot of the girls that we met had made a travel group hadn't they and yeah. were traveling to hostels together so they weren't really alone um yeah i mean i felt perfectly safe but obviously this is about females yeah um i don't know how i'd answer that because i think if you're like there's different levels of traveler isn't there like there's people who've just been to like thailand cambodia and Laos, and that's really easy to travel so but then there's people who are much more adventurous. And I think if you haven't done an adventurous country before, then I think I didn't, I wouldn't recommend doing India alone. But if you're very, very like adventurous, then you'd probably be fine. 
but it's just making taking precautions like when we're in the north and stuff we didn't do this on purpose we just were never out late because there's no drinking culture so again like if you were a solo woman i just would never be out like late at night and stuff yeah i think just be sent just be sensible yeah um but yeah and, and i yeah i think i think generally our experience was safe like yeah. gem generally yeah but we we're quite sensible and we were together obviously yeah so it's hard to answer but yeah, if you're in a group, I think you'll you'll be fine. And if you're adventurous, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, um, what negatives and positives are there about India? Positives. Food. Food was unreal. Food, food is amazing. amazing. Oh. Put on so much weight yeah, in I've India. Yeah, I put on so much weight. But the food is absolutely unreal. And you even got into lots of vegetarian food as well, which is like unheard of because Gaz is a massive meat eater. Yeah. But he got into like, I got him eating I'm a dal. good fan of chana masala yeah. and dal makhani, mukni, whatever mukni, it is. Dal mukni. I can't say it properly. But yeah, I'd say the food was obviously amazing. Um, but... I God. I was going to say another positive is like just how different each state is. So like, because obviously it's a humongous country, it's hard to generalise India in general. And we should have probably said that at the beginning. Like, it's hard to answer it because everywhere is so different. But also, that's the positive about India. You can go from one area where you might get a little bit burnt out and you go to a completely new culture and you're like, it's like changing countries when you change states. And that's really fun to travel around and it's just like exciting and new all the time. Um... Negatives, I think you kind of touched on one earlier, like if you're not in the right frame of mind in some cities, you can get so exhausted because you're constantly having to be switched on. Like you have to look on the floor to check you're not walking in cow poo. You have to check like your surroundings because it's cars whizzing around, people like trying to talk to you all the time. So you, you don't, you can't just cruise around not really pay much attention. Like I couldn't even imagine doing India hungover in any way, shape or form because you'd probably just get hit by a car or something if you're not paying yeah. attention and, the, and then the only other negative would be like I guess it's good how big it is but like sometimes the journey is you'll look look on the map and you're like okay it's the closest city to it or the closest place to it and it will take like seven hours on the train or like 10 hours on the bus or like going from one place in Goa to like yeah. a beach further down I thought god it's going to be 20 minutes like you know, 20 minutes from North to South Goa. You're talking like two, three hours North north to South Goa. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a negative because there's so many good stuff, but I guess it's, yeah, it, it can be if you want to get around and see as much as possible. And it's obviously massive. You have to fly, get long trains and long buses and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'd say that probably summarises that. And that's probably why it takes like two months we only scratch the surface of like India in general because yeah you have to factor in like travel days and stuff and I think generally us we're quite like um lazy so we don't like taking long overnight buses and stuff so we'll just fly all the time but yeah yeah it's hard to <laughs> but like sometimes there's no option but to get a bus yeah um and it's got to be done right quick fire round to this one top three places go <laughs> Um, I'm going to do a variation of across the country. Just say them okay. quick. Jaipur in the north, uh, Kerala in the south, and then Amritsa was very, very north because that was really interesting. Amritsa. 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 I can't say it right. Amritsa. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Go on. Mine. Yeah. Obviously you. Uh, <laughs> Jai Selma or Jasmine. I keep saying it wrong. Jasmine. That was good up north. I love the camel safari. Um, I would say Goa, it was just great. Yeah, it was a good vibe. Good, good vibe. beach town. And then I liked Mumbai as well. I felt like we went to like the pub basically. And like we lived like we were in the UK for a week, like going to different bars and restaurants. But at the same time we were in, in still in India. So yeah. you could go and get like local food and see local stuff. So I'd say Mumbai, but gen generally there were very few places that I didn't like or I wouldn't, wouldn't go back to. Yeah, and no, I agree. I really liked um, the food in Mumbai as well. Honestly, right, I'm sorry, but this fly is... Just ignore the fly. It's going to be buzzing all over You're on a live stream, Abby. <laughs> it's annoying me, just though. Just ign ignore the fly. Okay, it's, just okay, do okay. it's just doing its... It's, it's just it's doing fly. It's, it's doing fly kind of things here. It's distracting me. It's doing fly things. Okay, what surprised you most about India? Uh, I kind of feel like we've kind of done that question. Uh, probably for me, how much I like the food, because I would say I'm 
Would you say I'm a fussy eater? Yeah, you are a fussy eater. I'm like, I'm like a fairly fussy eater. Like I, I eat what I like and I know what I like, if you know what I mean. And uh, it takes a while to introduce different foods like into my 10 foods I eat. Yeah. But yeah, how much I literally loved like street, the street food, the desserts, the snacks, obviously the curries. Um, so yeah, like I think the thing that surprised me the most was the food. And then the second thing, if we're allowed to do two, was again, like just how many thoughts there were in, <laughs> in, in the just north. Did Rajasthan, though, that yeah, well. that's true. But I was like, oh my God, another massive thought. This is crazy. But yeah, that was surprising as well. Like um, how much there was to do. And also the rail was surprising. Like how easy, oh, yeah, that was really... how easy it is to get around. Like yeah. generally, I think recently they put one to go Asia um, online so you can book tickets online now you pay a little bit more um, but you can literally like yeah book your tickets on there and it's super easy to get from A to B yeah I think the only thing of mine is the same as yours but I think the only thing that I can't just say, do that same no, as no, yours no like it's the the lack of rules but the lack of like rules like there's no there's, and the there's spitting not... oh the spitting why that's one, that's one of my negatives yeah. lots of lots of people spitting yeah that's not nice at all is it but that for me it was there's laws that no one follows but then there's rules around the laws that no one's follows on how to not do the law properly like it's interesting like once you get like an insider's knowledge into how like the it what you works. mean what kind of laws you just mean like traffic no, like that in general, I just like, you know, when we were doing the tuk-tuk ride in Amritsar and we were going to the border crossing, we were speaking to our taxi driver and he was just like, we have no laws in India, but like, he was like explaining how things work and like, it was just crazy. Like you can get around anything, basically. There's nothing that you, you wouldn't be able to talk or buy yourself out of, basically. But like, no one really follows many rules, do they? Yeah. Like, and also when we went on like, the desert safari and the guys were like we're just small people in it and vast thousands of people so like unless you've done something drastically bad they're never gonna like chase yeah. you yeah it's just interesting that i think like yeah i just thought that was really surprising in general but um yeah that's the end of that um what would you not recommend india or traveling in general traveling in general not recommending India is we stayed like four nights in Agra or something. And although the day of sightseeing in Agra was really, really fun, we definitely wouldn't it's like recommend. It's like a tourist city, yeah. Yeah, we didn't really like vibe with the actual city at night times I'd, or anything like that. I'd say nice. get yourself rest, book yourself rest weeks as well. Yes. So like if you're going to do the north or the northeast, like go through it in three weeks and like see as much as you want but then make sure you've got either a nice hotel with a pool or you go somewhere mm -hmm. that's relaxing you know for you for a rest week so you can recuperate recharge and just chill for a few days so I'd say like if you're planning on a longer trip um, although kind of north and south are massively dis different maybe like if you're doing the north first like book a week and go up before you do the south or book a week on a beach or something um, to give yourself time to chill. I would agree. I think that's also a good tip for traveling in general. Like obviously we've been on the road for 10 months and we have to like factor in rest time now because otherwise you just, it just loses its spark and you don't want to do that. So if you rest, then you come back as excited, if not more than ever. Yeah. Um, I'd also say for India, like what what's it? someone said to us, you pay for silence yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So if you want to spend like, you could spend $10 on a room in a hostel, which is nice, it's clean, but it might be in a busy location. But if you want to spend like $15, $20 and you can get a really like relaxing place. So I think, yeah, like obviously you can do it super cheap, but if you want to do it a bit more luxurious, then don't be afraid to do that. That's true. And also remember to spend more on accommodation in Mumbai because we got done over by that dodgy, horrible hotel. Oh, that was, yeah. That was not good. Yeah. And I also think if you're up north, plan your route because you don't normally with like other places, you bump into other travellers, they'll tell you their route and then you kind of take guidance from other people. But because there's not a huge backpacking scene in India or sometimes there's been hostels, we've not met anyone, you can't rely on word of mouth. Plus you need to make sure your trains 
are slightly booked further in advance and like accommodation and stuff so I think for the north because it's so overwhelming have a, at least a rough idea of your plan so then you can just kind of like yeah plan in advance in case you don't bump, it, bump into anyone yeah agreed that sounds good most challenging thing in India apart from the language barrier I don't even think the language barrier is that bad no. to be honest like God, I drank my coffee too quick. Um, most people spoke basic English or we could communicate with them. Um, but yeah, the most challenging thing, just probably the day-to-day -day chaos. Like, obviously, we work online. So, like, sometimes we would just be, like, have to work from our room, basically, like a small box room because maybe there wasn't any Wi-Fi or there'd be, like, really loud music playing at like 8 a.m. in a in a cafe or there was or there weren't any cafes so I think for us it was like getting somewhere where we could concentrate and and essentially like do any kind of work so I think that was probably the most challenging for us and then generally just the the chaos tuk-tuks um oh yeah and then like in certain areas like people will just be trying to scam you so then it's kind of like trying to weigh up in situations like in certain areas where like if someone's actually just being kind or they're gonna then try and scam or something. Yeah I think that was yeah that was one of the most yeah because whenever people speak to us I we always speak back to people yeah and then in Delhi we got done so many times by people just saying where are you from and I was like England and then I was like god damn it <laughs> follow you everywhere. and then like, literally people were following us for 20 minutes sometimes um, pretending that they're not selling and then they sell at the yeah, end and but, it's just like yeah but don't don't get me wrong like if you didn't engage you could have just kept walking yeah and this wasn't anywhere this was only in like the most touristy area yeah. of, of Delhi basically yeah that's no, true um, they see you coming a mile off that don't they but yeah you have to get you have to learn how to say no very quickly yeah and the English love a good queuing system don't we yeah we yeah, take yeah, yeah. we take ages to like queue we're after quite, you sir we're very polite as a culture are we sometimes? so we needed to learn to become more blunt yeah and to the point yeah <laughs> and you've said to me once well that was so blunt yeah because Gaz isn't normally blunt but he just he's he got quite blunt in uh, India just because that's how that's how it is. Even one of the guys behind the reception, because Gaz was like, thank you, thank you, please, thank you. And the guy stopped him and was like, look, in India, we do not say thank you that many times. Like, it's uncomfortable. And Gaz was like, oh, okay, sorry. And he's like, don't say sorry either. It's like, sorry, oh, like, thank okay. you. And then I thanked him for telling me the advice. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> and I think just one more thing that actually did shock us when we arrived. It might not, this might not um, be for everyone if they don't come in January, but just how freezing cold it was for us when we were up north oh my god we yeah forget that. it was so cold we we had to we had to literally go to a mall and buy hats gloves hats, and scarves scarf, hoodies and like i don't think i was warm for three weeks because there was no heating hot water and i think we came and there was like a hot a cold weather yeah we got morning. an alert on our phone for like extreme cold weather but before we went to india we were checking the weather and we were like okay it's going to be colder than like thailand etc because it said it's, it said 20 degrees it, it said wasn't but even degrees. in the cold areas it said 14 degrees yeah and like we were shivering out there with two two hoodies hats and yeah. scarves on so i just think the weather was wrong on like on our app yeah i feel like it was, was just not, it not was reporting the weather correctly at crazy all. it was interesting the fact that it was so cold but yeah Okay, this is probably a quick one. How far in advance do you book trains? Uh, um, about five to five days to, to a week, I'd say. We were quite, you know, in the in. No. In the, yeah, we were. We were pretty organised. I think you can get them three days. Mm. Three days. I think three days is fine. Honestly. Between the main tourist cities. Yeah, maybe to, between the main. When we got when we went to Amrit, so we could only get the lowest class. Yeah, true. I mean, you'll always get on the train, but if you want to book like a first or second class. Yeah. So I think we've done first class once, second class like a few fair few times, and then third third class um we we done that once because there were no other other tickets. All of them were fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think so I think three days, Abby thinks five days. But, I think five to I booked the trains more. You didn't. And I would give I would give you didn't book the we, trains we were usually more. a week ahead. You didn't we, put the train more. We did. You didn't. Did. 
Oh well, we're gonna have to agree. <laughs> we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. We're have but a fight. basically, you need to book them in advance. Yeah. You can't just do what you do in Europe. If I was gonna listen just... to anyone out of the two, it's the most organised, and I would book a week I in mean, advance. Mm, right, moving I'd, I'd on. Say three moving days. on. Right. Um, how cheap is the transport? Cheap enough to get tuk tuks many times? Yeah. God, yeah, yeah. so cheap. Sometimes, didn't. Sometimes I felt bad, like how far we would go for how little money. Yeah. So I would give like more money, basically. Um, they have Uber as well. So yeah. So we just use Uber, rickshaw, and that also kept you safe in like say Delhi when you're in that like dodgy area because then you knew that like you can just pay for it online, and if someone accepts it, they've accepted the price, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And then we would always just leave a tip, like, because sometimes we were in it for like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And it was like one dollar, one pound. And yeah, I think, I think like when it's that cheap, it's crazy, yeah. isn't it? And um, we only, we only got a scooter once in Goa and that was it. And the rest of the time we used public transit, like taxis, tuk-tuks, trains, flights. So that's how cheap it was. Yeah. It was easy. But yeah, tuk-tuks, great. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Is India the cheapest country you have been to? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah, but but by the end of it we slowly like by the end of it we slowly started to book more luxury places. But that's because we were in the south as well, I think. Yeah, but I think in I think like in general, yes, it's the cheapest place we've been Food to. Food was so cheap. Food was so and cheap. And like we didn't don't get me wrong, we did eat in local places as you'd see from our videos. But we didn't always eat in local places. Like I'd say every other day we would go to like, if we're in a city, a different type of restaurant or something. Yeah, yeah, we? yeah. We'd mix our cuisines um, up just to keep it And we, we didn't, we didn't, I think India is probably the first country where we didn't go without. Like we'd done everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we'd done everything we wanted to do, like every attraction. Yeah. We stayed where we wanted to stay. Yeah. Would you say so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and we kind of didn't go without. And we gave, I think we just had no problems. Like it was so cheap, it was so easy to give back to the community as well. You know, like tipping and like just in general doing, like just making sure that you weren't cutting corners and stuff. It was yeah. just, yeah, it was, it was very cheap basically. Um, would you recommend doing north to south or vice versa? I personally would definitely recommend what we did. So going with the knowledge that the north is going to be very very like crazy and chaotic and it'll be a massive culture shock but then if you can end in the south where it is a little, a little bit more relaxed and the culture is a bit more similar to like western cultures in some ways then i think that's nicer because it kind of like you go from crazy to less if you know what i mean as you work down but then other people might disagree and say it's nice to get eased into it from the south and then go up and then you kind of build up to like yeah build up to the mayhem but I think if you were only going to do the South, you could like start in Mumbai to get like a taste of India, couldn't you? Yeah. And then go down. But I think... Do you think North to South as well? I think that was the right Yeah, thing. yeah, I do. I, I think do. maybe look at the weather though, because like but people But then South's saying... massive, the South's scorching, isn't it? And like the North, so I think either way we would have done it thingy, but I don't I, know. I, I, I always preferred, and just arriving in, in Delhi that first day. Jesus. There's nothing more like it was just so it was just so fun. Yeah, you can so certainly fun. say that we threw ourselves right in the deep end, like walking around, literally just walking around Delhi. Yeah, yeah. Like, with like no, walking no... around the old Delhi, like with no guides. It was a miracle we weren't scammed. To be fair, wasn't it? Yeah. We probably had like a sticker on our back, but yeah, I would I would recommend not to tell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I, we've got next in big capitals summary of India. Abby, I'll leave this to you. Oh, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, we, it, it was ama it was amazing, shall we say. Yeah, it was the biggest adventure we have ever been on. Like, I have wanted to go to India for years. Before I even met Gaz, I've always been like, it's just a country that really... Oh, it was my idea. No, and you know it wasn't your <laughs> idea. It's a country that's really, really intrigued me. The culture is so fascinating and it literally didn't disappoint at all. It's so interesting, like... Every day is different. Every day was a new adventure. I said, like, when we was first arrived that I woke up every morning like, I'm in India. And I'd, like, run around, like, adrenaline, full full throttle. And it's just one of those countries where it's just, like, so alive and exciting. Oh, you stole my phrase. I, so alive. I said that. India's alive. It's very alive. Oh, well, I feel like we, no one asked this, but let's just do a quick top experiences in India. I think I know, I know what we'll go for. 
the, the rain dance in the Kerala theme park. That to us, we came out. Oh yeah, that was, that was so funny. Yeah, that was the best thing ever. The rain, so yeah, the rain dance Kerala theme park. Um, the boat cruise in Alepi or Aleppi. Yeah. That's good. Manar sightseeing. Yeah, and then... Desert safari. Desert safari, and then... Um, Jaipur, Redfort. Jaipur, Redfort. So you've just named, a, like, a quarter of our trip. No, no, that's full top experience. Okay, really. four. Full top experience. Yeah. All. Was... Jaipur was good. I don't know if I'd go with zip line in, in Jodhpur instead of that, but... Okay, yeah, they were but, both good. But, like, yeah, there were... There were there were a few things where I was like that wasn't that wasn't good. Yeah, that's a good summary of like India in general, and yeah, it was just it was so fun, and we met so many lovely people as well, and it was just. We'll be we will be back for sure. The northeast is gonna be. Traveled. Northeast is getting done. Yeah, it's getting done because all of you guys are coming. It's going go to the northeast, go to the northeast, go I to the northeast, we'll just, and we just didn't have time this trip. But. I think next time we'll just plan. Uh, a surf, like a loop around the northeast around yeah. the mountains and and just kind of hit hit that because i'd say it's so big maybe just pick a region as well yeah yeah it was it was we did we did quite a lot of the touristy route and we'd like to try and see like a little bit off of that now and see the northeast so that's on our bucket list we don't know exactly when because we've got a lot to get through this year but of course we'll put a community post up where we know when we're coming to india so back to india and we will let you guys know asap but anyway, what's next for the channel then? So we are actually currently in Sri Lanka, as we are all we? know. Yeah, yes, they already know this. It was oh, announced right. at the end of the last video. So we're in Sri Lanka. We are here for the next month doing loads of videos on surfing and like mountains. Wait, wait, let me correct you there. Trying to surf. Trying to surf <laughs> mountains. And here's like got a real big, big, strong like backpacker and tourist scene. So it's like, yeah, we meet lots of people and stuff. Yeah, we're excited to see how the two countries compare as well. Yeah, I don't know, I don't like comparing countries. But well, it's think, good to see, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. the influences from one to the other. Yeah, that's true, because they're kind of close. But anyway, we've got Sri Lanka for the next month. Then we're having, like, a kind of chilled out, more worky month between Thailand and then we're going to... Should we say it? Yeah. And then Scotland. We're, <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to Indonesia, going to do like a series on Indonesia whilst also like spending a little bit more time. We're trying to find like a little base area for us to like have to go back to now because we've been 10 months on the road. So we want to have like a little for us to little launch our For us to launch our uh, adventures from. Yeah. So we're just trying to suss out some areas, but we'll also be filming travel content as we do it. So got loads of exciting stuff to come. Really looking forward to that. And yeah, Sri Lanka series is going to be sick. Anyway, <laughs> right. <laughs> Gonna be sick. You got you sign it off. I've honestly necked my coffee. Yeah, I'm sweating because I have to turn the aircon off. So right. So if you are new here and just happen to stumble on this video, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, but make sure you like and subscribe. And yeah, looking forward to Sri Lanka. Yeah. And if you are interested in joining our memberships, then I'll leave the link in the pinned comment below as well but yeah we really hope you enjoyed the India series we loved it and we'll see you in Sri Lanka <laughs>